Yeah, caress me, hold on tight and don't let go, baby, I'm about to explode, cause all my love, it can't come down, oh yeah, oh yeah, yes, oh yeah, what happened to uh, Miss Case, girl, we ain't seen or heard from Miss Case, I don't know how long. We need to put a bolo out for Miss T because I ain't seen Miss Case in so long and I need Miss Case to make another appearance. Not for a versus because she ain't last that long. But I would love to see Miss Case come back out and give us another. I'm, I'm missing you. Like, I don't know why I'm in such a singing mood. I'm in such an R&B mood this morning, y'all. Ooh, and I got to clean up. Oh, yeah. My house is going to be jumping this good early Monday morning. Listen, y'all, I really tried my hardest to give y'all the review last night, but y'all, my body just wouldn't let me. I was so tired and I went to sleep. <laughs> All right. I went to sleep. I said it on DVR. I went to sleep. I didn't give a flying hot damn about none of them. Not the one of them. I did not care last night because my body just would not allow me to do so. But it's early Monday morning. And, you know, hey, why not? Right. Because I know y'all looking for it and I can't just not give it to you. So um, here I am. Roa, season 14, 19, reunion part two. So let's go. So Latoya Hutchison is still giving her life story as if I, you, or anybody else up there on that stage really care. Because much like Team Twirl said, and I'm on her side, she can cry me rivers as long as the now. She really can. Because I'm the queen of the night. Anywho, as I used to always thought it was the now. Anywho, <laughs> that's why I threw that. But, um... Um, Lord, I was making a point and then Whitney came in my head. Um, oh yeah, she could cry just as many rivers as Justin Timberlake was talking about. At the end of the day, the, sh the, the foul things that come out of her mouth, we just don't give a fuck. And that's basically what Tim Twirl was saying. Well, all of the negative, nasty things that she done said about me... This is what I got for her, Andy, and that thick ass, the tears, that thick ass storyline, all of it. We don't care. We and none of them girls care. And I, I, I was on their side. I was because Bravo Andy kept trying to make it a point to get people to try to understand Latoya Hutchison's side or understand what her past is, so and so and so. Girl, everybody got one. But at some point, your past should not define who you are as a person now, as an adult. You understand what I'm saying? Most like because of what you went through in your past, that should make you be or want to be a, a, a much more better person or human being in society, period. And I'm sorry. I just don't feel like what you got going on really contributes much to or of anything. You feel like materialistic shit is what matters and it's, it's, it's what makes you. And I feel like that is the wrong example to use um, to, to, to use for grown, young, impressionable young women to be brought up with. I don't feel like any young girl needs to think that material shit and fashions means, means more and that means you're somebody. And it doesn't. It doesn't. A lot of the fuck niggas I know got money and fashions and cars and clothes and houses and all of that. Most of the fuck niggas I know got that. That don't make a person like you or make a person want to be around you at all. It doesn't. But whatever. Um, so Latoya talks about the break-in and then Team Twirl's tweet comes up. I, I Girl, I'm really glad, though, that no one got hurt and that, you know, it, it, it didn't get worse than it did. I will say that much. I'm glad that it didn't get worse than it did. And Team Taurus tweet comes up. Listen, this is what I got. I really don't care because I just don't the fuck like Marlo Hampton if that's so real name. You understand? So I, I, I just don't care. I don't care. I, I don't whatever 
Team Twirl gives mug shot to Billy Goat. It just is what it is. I don't get Andy. Listen to me. And, and I'm going to say it again. I said it before and I'm going to say it again. I don't give two flash shit, st- shit stains on the shingle what Latoya had going on previously in her life. I don't give a fuck how many dirty ass, fucked out, pissed out ass mattresses. <laughs> I'm not going to look. No, no, don't do that. No, don't do that. It, it, that Look, don't do that. Don't do that. I'm Look, look. I'm not even going to let her take me to that point because she not even on my level. OK, you understand? She not even on my level. So I'm, I'm not even going to let the spirit of Scotty by Nature TV um, come rain down on me. I refuse to let it happen. She ain't even on my level. So it don't even matter. Moving on. Um, so Bravo and Andy brings up. So Bravo and Andy brings up um Shad Rat the Billy Go throwing me Shack and Shad Rat up out of the house so much so without they want to cope like the fuck I said. I, I don't care how. Anybody try to cute it up. Mug shot said what she said because that's what she did. She threw the ass out. And then it's funny because now we found out Crystal don't even talk to her ass no more. I, I, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't either because you probably threw them boys off on her and probably didn't so much give her so much as a, as a freaking penny. That's why she ain't talking to your ass. And I don't care what nobody got to say about that. That's what that is. Talking about some you blessed. You blessed, all right, but it surely ain't from God. You better read your word, Latoya. Want to talk to your ass either. You set up here, got all these people, all of my damn business. Probably didn't even advocate for your sister to get paid. She probably did that shit for free. Oh, Girl, but see, again, she ain't even on my level. So I ain't even about to let her take me to that point. And so forget it. So Drew says it could be hurting to hear some of the comments about Ralph gaslighting her. Drew, girl. <coughs> Since you looked up the definition and now you see what gaslighting is and now you see that he is doing that for you. I mean, I guess I'll let you have it, Drew, but, I, you know, yeah, I'm sorry to tell you, and it's fine as Ralph is. He gaslights the hell out of you. But see, th- see, he could do that to you and still be with you, and it is what it is. But see, me, he could never do that to me or Scotty. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? He could never do that to us. See, the gaslight shit don't work on it. Besides, we don't need Ralph, Ralph, Ralph like that. No way. We just want to fuck him. That's all we want to do. We want to fuck him. Ain't nobody tell you to go and get married and have babies and all that. That wasn't part of the deal. So you just wanted a fine-ass nigga, and that's exactly what you got. But girl, your nigga is our nigga too. <laughs> Period. Anyway, so she by nothing rose her eyes while Drew was talking about Ralph and his non non football football playing glory days for Ruckus, um, because he was red shirted. Listen, sh- sh- look, she by nothing, girl, you don't have the right. Listen, at the end of the day, you had to lay down with a son named Bob because. <laughs> 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 Because it wasn't your rain that he was making come down. It was all that sweat that he that he probably thought was calm, but I know it wasn't. And you endured that for as long as you did. Plus had two damn churn. I think it's two, three, however many damn churn you had from him. You dealt with that and, and, and all of the rest of that shit. And you really ain't getting nothing for it. But I but a house that's in your mama name. And fashions that belong to Sheen and, and, and that belong to Sheen and uh, uh, Amazon. Like, you ain't got the right to sit over here and roll your ass. Okay, maybe he was red shirted and maybe he didn't really get to play like that or whatever or whatever. But he was still something and then he was somebody, at least he won a sweat box named, <laughs> named Bob. <laughs> 
You know what? I ain't even finna do this with Sheree because she ain't even on my level. You understand? So I ain't even gonna do that with her ass either. Move, moving on. Oh, raggedy heifer want to sit over here and try to roll your ass with all of the shit that you had to endure being married to a sweat box named Bob. You don't have a right to sit up and roll your ass at anything because at least he won't kick it off in her ass. Yeah, I said it. So team twirl package comes up. Yeah, I said it. I said it. I said it before y'all come under my comments with the foolery. I said it and blame blame her for me going there with her. Blame me for me going there with her because I can't stand shit like that. Like, don't sit up here and try to roll when I'm talking about my husband and things that we got going on. And you want to roll your ass, girl? Please, you don't went from a sweat box that was kicking off of your ass to a felon that stole you out of house, a damn home, to a damn. Fuck nigga in a leisure suit. So you don't have the right to sit up here and try to talk about nobody, man, or roll your ass when somebody talk about they got damn the husband, for that matter. See, it's Scotty. It's Scotty. I need to stay away from his housewives reviews because I'm up here and normally, and y'all know I normally don't need I go off, but not like this. And you know what? Again, because you ain't even on my level, she Sheree, I retract what I said about being kicked off in your ass. That's the only thing I retract. But every damn thing else I stand by. Moving on. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's Joy saying. Maybe that's who it is. She said, I'm doing too much. I need to calm down. You're right, mama. Anyway, I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen. Anyway, Team Twirl package comes up. So Team Twirl says that the divorce is still at a standstill. Is it still at a standstill, y'all? Or, or are they finally divorced? Somebody put that down in the comments because I'm tired of talking about that. I ain't even go bother to look. Y'all let me know. So Sonya apologizes for hurting her feelings with the whole, um, you know, it's a couple strip comment. I'm glad that you apologized, Sonya, because that was some, you was, you, it, it, it was excessive. That's what I'm going to say, Sonya. It was excessive, and I'm glad that you realized that, and I'm glad that you noticed that. Moving on. So Team Twirl and Sheba Still in Fashions said that they really did want to go to the outfit with Sonya. And then... Uh, Team Twirl says that she really did want to go because she felt... She didn't want her to feel like she didn't want to be there. Because if y'all remember back in the episode, you know, like when Kenya showed that when she claimed that she was coming and she never did and all of the rest of that stuff, you know, she was saying that she really did want to support her because she didn't want her to feel like blah, 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 or so and so and so. And I hear you, Kenya, but I feel like this, if you're going to start off being a bitch to her, you need to just finish being a bitch to her. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, it it it, it you know not already drew your line in the sand. I mean, I I mean, while I get what you're saying, and I gave Sonya a lot, but like looking at it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't gonna say too much because I'm here for Kenya this season. But I mean, I hear you, Kenya. But it's it's you. I will say this. You and Latoya do share some similarities with the way that y'all handle people. Some, very, very few, very, very little, very little with the way that y'all handle people. That's that's what I'm going to say, because you're mad at the response. But I mean, how do you think she felt when you decided that you just didn't want to show up? You know what I'm saying? And then what comes up next next is the comments that she made about you know how she feels like you give sob stories to escape accountability, but you do, Team Twirl. Like, what does you and what Brooklyn and 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 and, and um, uh, Marquina Daily Everlasting got going on got to do with you not showing up when you were supposed to? While they all went out to go and take a tour of Sanga's house and all that stuff. If you didn't want to go, you just should have said you didn't want to go. Now, don't get me wrong. Editing can play a huge part. And maybe they just edited you in 
opening up your blinds and stuff, 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 and yada, yada, yada. And then you could have gotten a call about something going on with Brooklyn, yada, 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 and so and so and so. And you know, that's the reason why you didn't want to come back. I just felt like I, I look because of all of your years of not taking accountability team twirl, it's just hard to to just take your word for a lot of of because I don't want to say too much. I like Kenya this season. I do. Like, I could totally see a difference in Kenya, so I'm not trying to get her too much. But Leisure Sue, Sue FaceTime and she by Camel Toe. And in my opinion, it was so fake. And it was so staged. And it was very much so, I'm going to text you in five minutes. And after five, I'm going to text you. And in five minutes after that text, I want you to FaceTime me. And that's what he did. I, that's just what that scene gave me. I didn't give a damn. It did not matter to me. We didn't know that, need to know that Lee Su was in New York with you. Who gives a fuck? She bad charade like nobody likes him. Nobody likes him. I don't know if you ain't heard or you ain't watched, but nobody likes him. She Sheree, so nobody really cares that you're with him. If anything, they're disgusted and repulsed at the fact that you would want to lay down with a man that could publicly do this to his family. So nobody really gives a shit what y'all got going on. I know that you searching for a storyline by any means. While that messy ass sister trying to say that Drew was searching for a storyline, you searching for a storyline. Anywho. When he got there, yeah, but we will. Team Twirls John from Jamaica comes up. Now, she says he did come back after all of that took place. He just went to the bathroom. And, um, you know, she says that she don't understand why people thought that he showed back up to the hotel room. Well, the people think that because at your age, Team Twirl, this is when your sexual peak is at its most highest. So it's it's not so far-fetched for us to think that you're away on vacation, he's away on vacation, he lives in the UK, you live in the US. I mean, if you did have a little one-two skip to my my darling, to my bedroom, like, so... You're young, you're having fun, and you was laid up with a lesbian for however long you was laid up with her. Like, and you got you you done kitty clicking. You if you got your box beat in, you got your box beat in. Like, ain't no big deal, Kenya. Hell, I want you to get fucked. I wanted John to fuck. Listen, I want look. I want I wanted him to tie your ass up like look. I wanted him to tie your ass up like a Christmas Day turkey. You understand me? And just wear your box out. That's what I wanted him to do. You understand me? I wanted him to tie you up to the bed and just make you squirt till you couldn't do it no more. You deserve it. After everything you done been through, laid up with that butch doc, you deserve some real dick in your life. And I wanted him to provide that for you. Child, you better get out of this whole prissy, priss, priss girl. You better look outside. We ain't got that much longer to be here. Sonya saying that team to, I already talked about that. So who wrote Candy Pants sucks D down to the locker room? Who wrote it, girl? Who wrote it? Who wrote it? It was probably she by nothing old nothing ass. She probably wrote it. It sounded like something she do. Or it, might, or, or it may have been um Latoya Hutchinson. It may have been her. Anyway, Sonya's real comes up. So Sonya says that she always wanted to have more kids, but she didn't feel like Ross was listening to the things that she needed. Fine. I ain't getting into none of that. Whatever. It is what it is. Um, so Drew's advice to Sonya comes up, and Drew doubles down on what she says. Listen, like I said, I always thought when you got married, it was no longer an I thing, even when it came to children. So I just always felt like, you know, if a woman decides that she doesn't want to have more children and she's married, I feel like that's something that should be talked about with her husband. As the same as it is, if a man decides, I don't want no more kids, I'm going to get snipped. I feel like that's something that he needs to sit out and talk to his wife about. Like it's 50-50, it's all fair. You know what I'm saying? I feel like both parties should have that discussion with each other. 
And for the most part, that's what it was. I mean, they did talk about it. She said what she said. He said what he said, and they left him alone. Then he turned around, had a change of heart, and then she decided to, you know, say, hey, well, since he had a change of heart, that meant he listened to me. I appreciated that. So you know what? I'm going to have this kid. Fine. Fine. So I guess y'all next storyline is going to be now y'all trying to have a baby. I guess that's about to be y'all next storyline. So that's about to be the Ross's um, storyline, y'all, for next season. Them trying to have a baby now that she got her, her IUD taken out. So we already see what her storyline is going to be. I tell y'all, y'all use y'all pussies all the time. Y'all puss, your uterus, your fallopian tubes, your clitorises, everything, your eggs, whatever y'all got, y'all just use it all the like in any way that y'all can find to use it, you use it. And it works. I mean, I think it'd be cute seeing Sonya pregnant, to be honest. I think Sonya would look real cute pregnant because she fit. So she, just think about it. She's gonna look all brolic with a belly. Like it's gonna be real cute. I could see Sonya pregnant. We'll see Sonya, I guess. Because I do want you to come back for another season. Because I mean, like, I, and I'm giving her the same grace that I gave Akeisha on Bell Collective. It's both their first seasons. Drew needed another season for people to come around her or to start to anyway. So, you know, I ain't going to write Sonya off just yet. Let her come back second season. I don't know. We'll see. Um... So, but listen, Drew said what she said, and it is what it is. And y'all know me. I, listen, if you said it, say you said it. If you did it, say you did it. And it is what it is. Drew said it, and it is what it is. If y'all mad, get glad, ho. Who cares? Y'all gonna have something to say either way. I appreciate her for just standing in what she said. I appreciate it, Drew. Moving on. Um, Team Twirl and Latoya Hutchinson Real comes up. So, Bravo says that for Team Twirl, the issue started... Bravo Andy says that uh, for Team Twirl, her issue started from the comments that Latoya Hutchinson made about her mama. And Latoya Hutchinson says that she's always been dismissive to her. How? How? Because I, from what I thought, Kenya always tried to be cool with you. And you was cool with Kenya until you saw that your friend, the Weird Beast, wasn't. And when the wildebeest did not want you to be friends with her, you chose not to be friends with Kenya. That's that's what I thought. So, I mean, when when was she dismissive to you? I don't look. I ain't going back to watch it. Y'all let me know down in the comments. But that's what I always thought. I always thought Team Twirl tried, came in trying to be cool with, 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 with Latoya. But because she was the Weird the Beast's friend and the Weird the Beast didn't stop seeing it for Team Twirl, the Weird the Beast expected her friend that she brought on to the show to do the same. Uh-huh. Because was it the Weird the Beast responsible for getting Team for not bringing uh, her back? And if they brought her back, she wasn't going to come back. And that's why uh, Latoya was on for so long. Incident. Never mind. Moving on. Uh, Y'all tell me that in the comments. I'll be looking. So Latoya Hutchison comes up and she says that that's her best friend's name. She said, oh, that name that was on my police record. Oh, that was my best friend's name. Huh? Ain't that a crime? That I don't believe. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. And then you showing your birth certificate. The only way you can change your real name legally is to have that happen. Latoya, see, this is how I know you ain't got nobody's degree from the University of South Florida. You ain't got nobody's degree if you don't know that once you change your name, it's legally changed on every piece of thing that you got. Your birth certificate, your social security cards, them stolen ass credit cards. Well, you can't put your name on those because they won't chose. Um, but, you know, if they were, we're going to pretend like they was yours. And if your name was on there, all of those would change to uh, Marlo Hampton, if that's your real name. Everything would change to that. The mail, everything. Your prescriptions, whichever prescriptions they may be, because I don't know.
Because if Portia Mama was the street that all of the hoes stood on, I would think that you would be the light poles. <laughs> you would be the light poles that all them hoes stood on. <laughs> that all them hoes stood under. Child. Anyway, so Teen Twirl just completely just obliviates Mar uh, Marlo, if that's her real name. Well, all of her sentences, things that she went on, girl, you went to jail for slicing a bitch in their face. Probably from a razor blade that you got from under your tongue like they used to teach us back in the day. Mm -hmm. And I was on Team Twirl side. You always love to talk about what everybody else has done in their life, but you never want to bring up shit that you've done. And, and the things that you've done, you probably done the same as them, if not worse, because I ain't never slid a hole across her damn face. It ain't never been that serious. I mean, I've done some things, but I ain't never did that. Anyway, so Drew and Sheba Leisure Suits issue comes up. So Sheba Pop Secret says that Anthony was never her assistant. She just had him listed as that in her phone so she would remember him. I, I, I mean, I guess. I mean, I would feel like because you don't know that person that well, you wouldn't even have their number saved in your phone anyway. Quiet as it's kept, shit and big, important people have two phones, one for personal and one for business. I mean, I'm just asking. I mean, I feel like if I was you, I would have two phones. Anthony would never have my real number. He would have a business number. That's cool, but he would never have no personal personal, so that wouldn't even been an issue. But I mean, whatever. You knew him enough to save his damn name in the phone. I mean, I just felt like you just wouldn't save the number. You would know that it's somebody that you don't really know like that. I mean, I don't know. You know, that's what I do. If I if I already think you're gonna be stuck around sticking around like that or gonna be around like that for a long time, I don't even bother saving your damn name. You just a number. And the way my caller ID set up, it'll show your real name any damn way. So ain't no need to say it. <laughs> but whatever. So Missy as Anthony said that she by broke, don't pay. He never said that she didn't pay him. Basically, listen, because what? Okay, so because I'm about to end this. So basically what happened is the, the, the issue about Anthony a viewer question asks, why does Drew keep glossing over the fact of Anthony, her assistant, is telling Aroma that her husband is gay, allegedly. And she says that, well, she pulls out her phone and there was a recording of Ralph basically asking him, you know, why did you, why are you going out here saying this? Because this is what the people are saying. And they're saying that it came back by way of you. And you could clearly hear Anthony telling Ralph, she's lying. I did not say that. That bitch is lying. Blah, 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 blah. You know, given what most F bags give. And use your imagination. Y'all know what F I'm talking about. I just can't say it. And she by Sheree FaceTimes him. And we clearly hear him. And everybody sees him, including Bravo Andy. So everybody saw that that was really him. Not only. Does he admit that she he never worked for she by nothing and that she doesn't owe him? Basically, he lied. He basically lied that he he basically made up the rumor because he told Ralph in the recording he never said that 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 bitch is lying. But you clearly hear him saying over FaceTime. He may have said that, but if he did, he doesn't recall it. But Drew needed a storyline, basically. Drew needed a storyline anyway, basically, is what he said. But see, I'm not shocked at this because, again, this is the same F bag that started all that bullshit on Basketball Wives on season eight and started all of that foolishness um, when Jackie almost got her ass whipped down there to the skate rink. Y'all gonna look like, see, this is what pisses me off because we never have positive representations of the LGBTQ plus community on these shows. It's always some messy ass F bag that wants to be seen and wants to be heard by any damn means necessary. And that's what pisses me off. It, it gives all of us a bad name. It makes everybody feel like all of us is messy. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm messy when it pays me, which is up here, but I'm messy with, with this. 
in my real life i don't do shit like that and even when i was younger i never chilled around them type of queens i was i never i never went to a gay club i was never a part of the ballroom scene i was never a part of a gay family because most of that shit it gets messy and i would just i've never been a messy person i'm a, i'm a, i'm a, i'm a i'm a lady of a certain age you understand me of a certain year you get get it I'm the last of a dying breed. I'm the last of the 80s babies. Okay, I'm 88. I came up in a time. We don't do all that normally. And we don't get involved in all that normally. Like Miss Anthony, is th th those types are the reason why I was never that girl. And I was never around them. But whatever. That's it. That's all I got. I ain't got no more to give y'all. I'm shocked that I drawn this out to 30 minutes. <laughs> But yeah, y'all, that's all I got. Y'all jump down in the comments. Let me know what y'all thought about last night's episode. And yeah, girl, I'll holler at y'all later. Bye.